having a special treat this weekend that is truly out of this world. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Tomorrow, just after moonrise, a total lunar eclipse is taking place. So for 84 minutes, it starts around 8.30 p.m. The moon is going to cross through Earth's shadow, so it'll make the full moon appear a coppery red as it reflects right back to Earth. That's so really neat. 830 on Sunday. Look up and we'll check in with Alex later to see what conditions will be like. Yeah, so, so right now let's check in with chief NASA scientist Jim Garvin, who joins us to share why this weekend's moon is so special. Good morning. Good morning. OK, so tell us the significance and why it's so special. What we're going to check out on Sunday. Well, this is one of those wonderful celestial events that reminds us that we live in space and the moon crosses the Earth's shadow and turns this ethereal coppery red, reminding us of the interplay, the dance of the moon, the Earth and the sun. And during the eclipse, which will peak around 9 p.m. Um, LA time, you'll be able to see this shimmery coppery moon where the light from, from the sun reflects through the Earth's atmosphere, is lensed into all the sunsets of a given day and sunrises onto the moon. It's like a giant projector. And so this is exciting because the moon is in our mind's eye now as we think about returning back to deep space with people. Yeah, you know, let's talk a little bit about the moon and the fact that it's going to turn red during this lunar eclipse. Why is that? Explain the science behind that. So as, as, as the moon crosses the Earth's shadow, the Earth is this wonderful atmosphere that we live in. I mean, we breathe it, it's great. You know, <laughs> we talk about the weather in it. And so that atmosphere acts like a special kind of lens and it, it allows the red light to get through, making the moon look coppery red, um, but it doesn't let the blue light get through. It's just the way the scattering of our atmosphere works. It's a wonderful thing, yeah. and it makes us a very special moon, a light show that is all Mother Nature's wonder. Yeah, Mother Nature is truly spectacular. You know, we've sent, we've sent people to the moon with the Apollo program, but now we're going back. Can you tell us more about that? Absolutely, and for the last 13 years, we've been mapping the moon you know, up close and in person with our Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. We have instruments from all around the world mapping this, um, including ones built right at the Jet Propulsion Lab at, um, in California. And we're ready to go. And we found the places to go that are going to be so exciting. We're also getting ready to send new classes of robots, a rover called Viper. I mean, who doesn't like that name? To look <laughs> exactly. for, you know, uh, I, I knew a Viper once. But anyway, <laughs> um, Vipers to prospect for resources, including frozen stuff on the moon add a set of instruments that will go in commercial lander systems. That is our new partnership with the commercial aerospace industry to open that lunar frontier so we can send the first women to the moon in a few years. Oh, Jim, so cool. And I must say, I feel like you need your own show because you teach us so much and, and so much fun. And I love how you said this is a reminder that we live in space. I had to think yeah. about that. I'm like, we do live in space. Mm -hmm. Food for thought on a Saturday morning, Jim Garvin.